the, the, the real work of the church. Uh, the fivefold ministry is to train people for the work of the ministry. The fivefold ministry is not to do the work. Uh, we, we could do our part in training people for the work of the ministry. And uh, I believe that every person should be able to share Christ with people and share the word with people. I, every time anybody comes out here, whether it's a policeman or I don't care who it is in parks, they own my turf. So I come up there with my little golf cart, and uh, I was talking to this one guy, and I, I witnessed to him and asked him, was he a Christian? He said, yeah, he was a Christian, you know. And, of course, I, I told him my little story about the, uh, about the camel. you got to tell everybody that. How many, how many in here has never heard about the camel? Let's see. You've never heard it. Never heard. Never, everybody's heard about the camel. How many just want to hear it again? <laughs> oh, I tell you, Susan and me have a great time. When we go to Walmart, I, I get my little cart and I ride my little cart. Sometimes I, I uh, meet Bill there. We, he's on his cart and I'm on my cart. So we decided not to race, but we felt like we wanted to. But anyway, but I come up to him and I ask him a question. You know, a simple question. Hey, I got one for you. I got one for you, brother. How do you hide a camel in the desert? You don't know? You camouflage him. <laughs> now, how many of you know I have just put into that man's hand salvation, how to walk the Christian life, because on the back side of that is the website of the Shield of Faith. And we've got over 100 messages that's on that website. Just about any problem you got, you can check it out on the Shield of Faith website. Okay? Talks about redemption, salvation, whatever you want to know. Just think, I put, we put in people's hands the eternal Word of God that will show them that they don't have to go to hell. They can go to heaven. But it's, it's far better than that. But you can have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. I, I, I want to stress that uh, because I, 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 all during the week I am witnessing. All during the week. That's just like me breathing. I have to witness. We go to Walmart, you know. Well, let me get back to this guy out here. Now, he said he was a Christian and all. And I said, well, you believe in your heart that that Christ uh, was raised from the dead? Yeah. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Well, the Bible says you're saved. He said, wow. He said, um, I said, did you know Christians will never die? Now, that really, I mean, uh, uh, let's just say, I, I said, actually, we will never die. Did you know we will never die? He thought, well, my mother and father died. No, they're not dead. They're in heaven. You see, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8 says, Absent from the body, present with the Lord. And it was the light come on. He says, you mean my dad and mom's alive? I said, yeah. And they don't have this old body to drag them down either. And boy, they can really worship God. And they, and they were saved. Right? Oh, yeah, they were saved. I said, they're more alive than we are. See, our thinking has to get straight. Death is not the end. Death is deliverance. At one, two, three, four, five. Now, when you hear about my death, say, hallelujah, he's delivered from himself at last. Susan is finally delivered. <laughs> Look at my wife. I love my wife. That's my honey bunny right there. Anyway, <clears throat> but, but be brave. Be courageous. Now, let me give you a little de a demonstration here. Are you volunteering? Thank you. Come on up. <laughs> Charles ain't here. He's up here in safety. How you doing? You having a good time today? Yeah, now we're at Walmart. So everybody's all around. I said, have you ever heard this? How do you hide a camel in the desert? You don't know? You camouflage him. Hey, that's good. 
You camouflage him. Where'd you get that? Believe me, he'll laugh. See, he'll laugh. I said, let me tell you another one. Why was the skeleton afraid to cross the road? He didn't have any guts. What would you call a camel that has no humps? Humphrey. Humphrey. That's his name. Did you hear about the skeleton that went to the drugstore and ordered a big milkshake like that? And a mop. And a mop. And that's, that gets him. You know, drink. drink, drink. How, many, how many gets it? Sometimes you have to explain it to people. But I got another question. If you yes, die sir. right now, where, 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 where would you go? I believe I'd go to heaven. You believe you'd go to heaven? Why would you go to heaven? Because I know that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. You did? Yes, you believe in your heart that, uh, that he's the Savior and your Lord? Well, he's my Lord, yes. He's your Lord. Yes, that means he's the boss. Yes, sir. So you do whatever he tells you to yes, do. Sir. Well, that's good. Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Yes, sir. Well, the Bible says you say you're my Amen. brother. Thank you. Man, I appreciate you, brother. God bless you now. What'd I win? What'd you win? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you. Uh, I left my wallet at home. Susan tells me to leave my wallet at home. So then you look for somebody else. Hey, good to see you. This guy in uh, belts, Susan loves to go to belts, you know. You girls like to go to belts. You know, belts, you know. So I know she's going to be in there a couple of days, I mean a couple of hours. So I figured this would be a good time to go in and, you know, shake the place up a little bit. So I come up to this fella. I say, hey, how you doing there? Hey. What's your name? Clyde. Clyde. Clyde, you know, you're a right handsome good man there, Varna. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, well, you know, you could have a little improvement. But not, I mean, you're doing okay, though. Uh, I got a question. How would you hunt a camel in the desert? Cover him with sand? Well, you could, but kill him. No, you camouflage him. So you get, you got to be ready. You camouflage him. I've got another one. It's a dromedary. Sir? That's a dromedary. Flow with the flow, son. <laughs> <laughs> uh why was the skeleton afraid to cross the road? Mm. You're right. He didn't have any guts. Mm. Yeah, I, I know you knew that one. Yeah. <laughs> what would you call a camel that has no humps? Mm. Humphrey. Oh. Yeah, Humphrey. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, like, uh, like, like the guy that was the governor. Governor. And he and he ran for president. Yeah, you remember Humphrey? Yeah, yeah that was years ago. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. He never made back, president. Back when we were kids. Right. right. Well, you well, were. I, I was. was uh, yeah. I, 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 you were old by then. I was. I was up and voting at that time. Yeah. But anyway, getting back to what I was saying. First person I voted for. Was, He's trying uh, to change the subject, but you see, you got to. Carter. I, see when they. Lost, but he lost that year. Remember this. Anytime they try to change the subject, hey. Just kidding. Uh, did you hear about the uh, skeleton that uh, went to the drugstore and ordered this big milkshake? No. You didn't? And a mop. And a mop. Yeah, and a mop. Yeah. You know, drink the milkshake, it runs onto the floor, and you got to mop it up. Okay. I get it. You got it? I get it. You got it. Okay. I'm going to ask you another question. If you die right now, where would you go? <laughs> what, my body? No, where would you go if you die right now? My body, they'd probably stick it in the ground. All right, but where would your spirit go? Oh, my spirit. To the light? It would go to the light? Would it go to the, it, I've heard it would go to the light. No, the, let me tell you what the Bible says. Oh. Absent from the body, put your body in the ground. If you're absent from that body, that means you're not in the ground. What if you're not in the ground? Where are you? If you're absent from your body, where are you? Where is your spirit man? Let me make it, <laughs> let me make it simple to you. Absent from the body, son, present with the Lord. You'll be with the Lord. Yeah. I shared that with this guy out here in the truck. It, it was... It was 
a revival. You mean my father and mother is alive? I said, yeah, they're alive. They're Christians? Yeah. I said, well, they're with the Lord. Now, that knowledge that you have is tremendous. I want to say that again. Nobody seemed to move. The knowledge of that that you have, that the minute you quit breathing, you with the Lord. Thank you, thank you. See, that's got to sink in. Now, don't, don't go before your time. We need you to hang around here a little bit to get the gospel out. But see, when you're dealing with people, it's, 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 it's a pleasure. So if you, I want to ask you this question. Have you ever received Christ as your personal Savior? I think so. No, you got to know so. The, I, went, I went to Sunday school once. Well, that, that's good. I know the Sunday school teacher was happy. But listen, these things have been written right there in the Bible. That's enough. Don't read it too much. <laughs> that you might know that you have eternal life. That you might know, not think, not maybe. That you might know that you have eternal life. Would you like to know that you have eternal life? Well, yeah. Well, let me tell you how. Jesus, it's simple. It's not complicated. You don't have to try to climb up to the uh, to heaven to, to bring Jesus down. You don't have to go down into the pit try to bring him up. It's nigh thee even in your mouth. Open your mouth there, son. Yeah, I see it right in there. You see that? There, turn around with that and look at it. See that? Look at that. Right in his mouth. That's what the Bible says. It's nigh thee even in thy mouth. The word of faith. All you have to do is confess. Now, See, the Holy Spirit's working on you right now. He's showing you that if you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you'd be saved. Believe what? That Jesus Christ rose from the dead, the death and the burial and the resurrection. Have you ever confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior? I think so. No, you can't think. All right, say with me. If you really mean this, and you really want to become a child of God and have all your sins forgiven and go to heaven when you go and have fellowship with God while you're down here, I want you to say with me. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. You're ready? Yes. Okay. Okay. Say, Lord. Lord. I believe. I believe. You are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. Okay. I'm adding a little bit more in there. And I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my mouth. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart. That God has raised you from the dead. That God has raised you from the dead. Therefore I'm saved. That's what the Bible says. Therefore I'm saved. And God is not a man that the he Bi should. The Bible says that? The Bible says that. That's the word of God. And God is not a man that he should lie. Welcome to the family of God. You've just been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of God. Now, let me invite you to a fellowship that will help you grow and mature in the Lord. It's called the Shield of Faith. Okay? Okay. Now, if the Lord leads you elsewhere, be free, feel free to follow the Holy Spirit. But just remember, connect on to us. You got one? Now, you just get into the Word and get into this right there and come and see us and Hallelujah, and you're on a, you got a new, a new life ahead of you. <laughs> Thank you, son. <laughs> All right, now, is, is that true? Well, let's go into the Bible and see what it says. All right, turn, if you will, to Romans chapter 10. And we got 20 minutes, and we're going to let you go. Romans 10. You can put that on the board once I find it. Romans 10, verse 6. Always check everything out with the Word of God. Are we ready? There we go. The Word of God. But the righteousness based on faith, imputed by God, and brings right relationship with him says do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven that is to bring christ down now hold right there 
Notice this. But the righteousness, when we accept Christ, God imputes righteousness to us. Okay? He does it. And it's based on, say, everybody say faith. Now, God gives every man a measure of faith. We know that. That's Romans 10, I think it is verse 3. All right, let's go to the next verse. Verse 7. Or would you, who will descend into the pit? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead as if we could be saved by our own efforts. Look at that word very clearly. You cannot, we cannot be saved by our own efforts. We must come into our salvation the way God tells us to come into it. So, who gives you the righteousness? God does. When you accept Christ as your personal Savior, you don't have to try to, Lord, if you come down here, you can tell me. Or come up here and you can tell me. No, it's so close to us. The Bible says, it's nigh thee even in thy mouth. Go to the next verse. But what does it say? The word, God's message in Christ is near you. It's near you. How near is it to you? On your lips. That's how close it is. That's why you lead people to Christ and get them to mouth it, to get it off their lips and confess it. Salvation. When you do, then God begins that process of saving you and causing your inner man to be born again. Now, know what it says. It's near you on your lips and in your heart. All right? If I will confess with thy mouth or your lips the Lord Jesus Christ, number one. Number two, if you will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. See, that is so simple. Man's mind, no, you got to do something. I got to do something. No, no, you, you, you got to. Confess with your lips. It's nigh thee. God gives it to you. God gives you the faith. It ain't being water baptized. It ain't joining the church. Now that comes later. Get your duck straight. You're born again first. Then God begins to direct you. You'll be water baptized, which shows the people what has happened inside of you, that you're a new man. And that Christ has baptized you into the body of Christ. That makes us all brothers and sisters here. See, we have an obligation to one another to look out for one another and to encourage each other in the faith. That's why we meet together, to encourage each other in the faith. Now notice this. That is the word, the message, the basis, the object of faith which we preach. Which we preach. Paul says that's what we preach. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised from the dead, that shall be saved. Go to the next verse. Now, because if, because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and in your heart believe, heave to, trust in, rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Period. Hello? See, any church, and I don't say this to be negative, any church that comes to you and say, well, you know, you've you got to be baptized into our church. No, Christ did. The Holy Spirit did that for us. That's, that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, are you listening? See, this is what happens when you receive Christ as your personal Savior. The Holy Spirit goes to work and baptizes us into the one body of Christ. He does that by His Spirit. He unites us together, and we are all members of the one body, each one having their own function. My ear doesn't try to function as a tongue. My tongue don't try to function as the ear. Wherever God has put you and given you a gift in the body, just function in that area and don't try to take somebody else's job when you've not been called 
to do that because you're going to mess up the whole nine yards. How would you like your big toe to be on your nose? <laughs> no, big toe stays on the foot, nose on the head. Yeah, but I want to be on the head where everybody can see me. Oh, well, now, let's don't go that way, Bob. Okay, but you understand what I'm saying. All right, look what it says. Let me tell you something. If you just got one gift, in one way you're blessed. Do you realize the responsibility if you've got ten gifts? Man, you're going to be working. Because you're obligated to perform and to operate in those ten gifts. Well, I only got one gift. Blessed are thee, my child. Blessed are thee. Blessed are thee. I mean, she can sing. She can teach. She can pray. And just being a mother and a, and a husband... Tell us about it. <laughs> Don't, uh, hey, spare us. <laughs> Bless Michelle. I, I pray for her. She's got so many gifts, and she tries to operate all, and, that, and, that, and I appreciate that. But, you know, don't burn out on us. <laughs> Missy, Missy's got gifts. I tell you what, she's back there. I mean, you realize she has to keep all you women settled? I mean, you just go into orbit if it wasn't for her, keep, keeping you guys straight. And then look at the job she's got to keep the elders straight, her husband. <laughs> How many love me? Just a little bit. All right. Look at what it says. Now, that's clear. That's clear. That is not confusing. You join our church and you'll be saved. No. You'll be baptized in our church, you'll be saved. No. God has made it so simple. Now, once we are saved, we have no obligation to live for the flesh anymore. We're God's children. He's the boss. He's our Lord. We've committed that. We have acknowledged that. We're saved. Now we serve Him. But there's many ways that we serve Him. Number one, He wants us to meet together that we might encourage each other, especially as you see these last days. How many of you know we are in the last days? You know, there's the last days, then there's the latter days, and we are entering into the latter days. I was going to preach on that this morning, but I'm sparing you right now. All right, let's go to the next verse real quick, like 1010. Notice, for with the heart a person believes. Now, we're talking about the center of the individual, the spirit of the man, the heart of the man, okay? Not the heart that pumps blood. It's the heart of the man, the essence of your being, the very center, who you really are. You are a spirit, and you believe in your heart, in the very center of your being. You believe, and you confess what you believe. You remember uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13? You remember that? Of course you do. We have the same faith that he had. Who's he? The psalmist. The psalmist, he says, we speak what we believe. Have you, can you see that in there? We speak what we believe. What do you believe? I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. That's what I believe. I speak what I believe. How many of you are familiar with that scripture? <laughs> Write it down. We speak what we believe, not what we feel. That's right. My goodness, if I operate on how I feel, I'd still be over there in bed. How many would still be in bed beside me? The one, two. I knew I'm talking to the right crowd. But you see, we know he is Lord and we're going to obey him as long as we can get one foot here and one foot there. And get. I says to Susan, honey, I made it. And I'm sitting on the side of the bed. I said, I made it. I can make it, I can make it all the way through the day now. I, I got, I, I, and she's over there. Same thing over here. All right, let's get on the positive side of the cross. Let's get on the resurrection side. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because of him, I have his life. All things are possible with God. All right. Look what it says. 
For with the heart a person believes that he too trusts in and relies on Christ, and so is justified, declared righteous, acceptable to God, and with the mouth he confesses, declares, openly speaks out freely his faith. Woo! Glory. Somebody say glory. glory. Let's do it again. That's fun. Glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Good, that was your part. All right, look what it says now. For with the heart, a per that's why we call people up here. That's why I have people to speak, speak. I forgive, I bless. When you forgive people, it's not so much for the other person that's hurt you, it's for you. How many understand that? Well, let, let me see here. I'm not going to pull out any of your... I'll go bankrupt with this crowd, I tell you that. <laughs> Ooh, twenty dollars. <laughs> oh, no, there you go, one dollar. <laughs> Look, <laughs> man, he he gonna crawl over that chair there. there. One dollar. All right, now let's see. You hold on to that for me. Now. Now, what I want you to do, hold it in your hand. Uh, all right, and, and, and put it up where everybody can see it, like that. All right, in your hand. No, just put, put it in your hand. There you go. Now, that's like, let's just say that's her heart, okay, her, the center of her being. And she won't give up that bitterness, that dollar, because God has something better to give. How many would trade the bitterness for the forgiveness? All right. But she's got to open her heart to let the bitterness out through forgiveness. Are you listening? To be able to receive the forgiveness of God. God wants to forgive, but he can't because you're holding on to that bitterness. See? And sometimes we feel so justified. Now, she's got a, uh, a five. <laughs> oh, she would willing to give it up for the 20. All right. Let's have a little fun while we travel, right? All right. The main thing is we get the message and, uh, and practice it and apply it in our lives. Now, let's go to the next. All right. Let's, let's finish reading that. Everybody look at it. For, for with the heart a person believes. Now, the brain is connected with that, but it's not a mental type of thing. The brain is definitely in operation there, but the brain is relating what the heart is believing. So when we believe in our heart, I heave to, trust in, rely on Christ, rely on Christ for your salvation, Re rely on Christ for your healing, uh, rely on Christ for your provisions, and on and on and on we could go. All right, and so is just so you. When you do that, you're justified. You're declared righteous. You're acceptable to God. And with the mouth, he confesses, or she confesses, declares openly, and speaks out freely his faith, and confirms his salvation. How does he confirm his salvation? Speak it out. You confirm it. I like to have things confirmed. Uh, Mr. Tilton, now you've just inherited a million dollars. Would you confirm that for me? But, <laughs> with two or three witnesses. <laughs> Would you put it on paper and confirm it for me? <laughs> All right, you're getting the message? You confirm your salvation how? 
See, that principle is, that, is how you ever promise in the book. Come to us by believing and confessing with our mouth. Now, I get up tired in the morning. And all of us can identify with that. But I believe <laughs> in my heart that all things are possible. And Susan can get out of this bed and cook my <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> all right, you got that point. Next verse. See, I'm trying to pin this down to where you'll do it backwards and forwards. Look at the next one now. The Scripture says, No man who believes in him, who heaves to, relies on, trusts in, will ever be put to shame or be disappointed. That's a guarantee God will fulfill his promise. You will not be put to shame. You will not be disappointed. Never. 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 But you will go through that period of attack. The enemy will come against your mind and rake you over. That's why they call it the good fight of faith. You have to learn to fight, not for your salvation, but fight the devil that tries to put all that under belief in your mind and in your heart. Look at the next verse. No one, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, or male or female. <coughs> in the spirit realm, you women have just as much power as men. Same power, no difference, there's no distinction. But now in the natural, God has set up an order of things. God, Christ, man, woman. We understand that? See, I've got, gosh, you've got one minute. Before the flood, how many of you know they were what you call watchers? Those watchers were angels. And they watched over the, the creation of God. And they were back in those days, they called them sons of God. And the women during that period of time, the Bible says they looked pretty good. They were pretty. Sometimes beauty is really a curse. Hello? Because it draws. <laughs> now, see, that's the way we're made. We're created that way. Men run after women, not women after men. Now, I know it ain't that way today, honey. I know that. I know that. I, that's why I keep Susan with me close by. <laughs> I mean, a man, you know, well, let's don't go that way. But let me tell you something. These angels, angels, now I, I, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm probably opening up a, a, a hot stove here, but I ain't got, can't explain everything to you. But that's why you need a covering. That's why what Paul says women ought to have the covering on their head. That was their culture back then, by the way. When you read the Bible, a lot of the things you see in the Bible was for the culture of their day. Now, you have to learn to ha ask the Holy Spirit to find out, is that for the day or was that for then? Okay. Did I open up some kegs of worms there? Just a little bit. Uh, you understand what I'm talking about? Okay. So, the women wore the little thing on their head to show the watchers, the angels of darkness, that they have somebody watching them down here, and that's their husband. Okay? Or if you're divorced, you have the elders and the leaders of the church watching over you. Okay? All of that's part of God's plan of having people come together. They don't understand that. And they, well, anyway, I'm not, getting, I'm not going that way. I'm going to get in trouble. But anyway, notice this. No one, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord over all of us, Jew and Greek. So when you read the Bible, you find back in Paul's time and, and the first century, it was Jew and Greek, Jew and Greek. Okay. <coughs> Anyway, I, boy, I could talk for hours on that. But 
and he generously restores his riches upon all, that is Jew, Greek, male, female, all who call upon him in faith. Go to the next verse. We'll have to quit. <clears throat> For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, invoking him as Lord, will be saved. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this beautiful day that our faith is anchored in the word of the living God. And we thank you that you have saved us and we have done what you told us to do. If we will confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you said we would be saved. And Lord, by faith we believe it. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name.